Hey, this is Rob again, and if you haven't watched the uh, previous video that shows how to translate the um, design for this plywood chair from Victor Papanek's book, Nomadic Furniture, then watch that video first. Uh, this is basically just a few more things that you might think about in relation to that. And so uh, for the first thing, it, I'll, I'll go back and edit my original sketch. And uh, in case it's not obvious, you can change any of these values and, of course, make the chair work differently. So that causes it to recline more. Um, I have some distinct measurements that I'm interested in here, like the 11 inches, uh, which is where the bottom of your back is, uh, or your the, the bottom of your butt, which, depending on which axis you're on. <laughs> but uh, that's, that's saying that I want it to be 11 inches away. I can change that number. And in fact, maybe it's an important enough number in the design of this chair that I'd make it a user parameter. So uh, I can just add a new parameter called um, sit height and uh, put that number in here and use that value instead. So sit height. And then uh, if I kind of go back to my rendered model and change that user parameter, I should be able to see in real time that uh, design change a bit. So uh, now it's 12 inches, so you can see it adjusts. So I don't have to be in the sketch to do that. If I go back to the sketch, you can see that it's there. Um, and maybe also, I, I kind of chose this sort of arbitrary point uh, for taking this measurement of 15 inches. So maybe, um, you know, this is this all has to do with design intent. Now, we didn't design this chair, so uh, it would be a, a lot different if I were designing this from scratch. So I'd decide which measurements are important. This obviously would be an important one. And maybe instead of the height of this point, maybe I'm interested in the actual um, angle of this bottom. So I could take a dimension here and say that that dimension is uh, actually a user variable. So right now it's 9.5 degrees approximately, and maybe that's a new one. Uh, this is seat angle. And I could put in anything here. Maybe I'll put in 11 degrees. Um, let's get rid of that because it's actually not supposed to be inches. So let's call it seat angle, and let's give it no units and uh, again, give it 11 degrees. So now instead of 9.5, I could call this seat angle. So I have another way of changing my uh, design on the fly. So uh, that's one thing I wanted to show you. Um, basically just where you decide to take these dimensions is important to the design and then also uh, that you can add more user parameters to make it easier to customize. Okay, and the other thing I wanted to show you is that you could use joints to put this together in a way that allows you to see all these pieces uh, slide together, uh, since they're all slots. So, you know, there may or may not be a benefit to this, but I thought it was worth demonstrating. So here I've moved back in the timeline to where I've just created the back. I've just extruded it, I've just moved it into place, and I've already created the slots. Since it's in the right place, I can use assemble, uh, I can use assemble and as-built joint, because uh, making just a joint requires, um, it, it doesn't require that the pieces are in place, it'll kind of snap them together, but in this case they're already in the right place, so I'll use as-built joint, I'll make sure it's a slider, and I'll just choose these two components as the two that should be joined together. And I'll just hide the uh, side and select my position by zooming in here and clicking there. So if I turn that side back on, you can see when I hit animate that it is actually uh, sliding. It's not sliding in the right place. You know, it is it is kind of going too far, but I can hit OK. And uh, what I can do is uh, drive joints and um, see what the, so this is the minimum one uh, zero inches. You can see here the distance is zero inches. And as I move it up, I can find what the maximum amount that I'd want to be able to move this joint is. So let's say it's uh, 31 inches. So what I can do now is right click on this joint hit edit joint limits and say the minimum is zero, the maximum is 32 inches. And uh, what I should see now is that if I uh, animate this joint, it animates it properly. And if I hit escape, I can drive this joint and um, I can only move it in um, within those limits. So it's actually it's kind of nice. You could you could do that between all of these different parts, and uh, that might not be a bad idea. 
So I've gone back to my original version without the joints just to show you one last thing. You know, that original design was really um, made probably to just cut on a table saw. Uh, the slots, there would have to be some trickery to get that to work on a table saw, but the idea was, you know, maybe with a minimal amount of tools, you could uh, cut these pieces out. And since we have the, the CNC router, um, you know, cutting all this out is trivial, and maybe cutting some other features is, is a lot easier than it would be otherwise. So we can do things like fillet uh, these edges to make a curved edge here um, and you'll notice that if I make that change on one of my components the copied component also has that same feature so it's kind of a way to mirror these two faces I could also create a sketch on that surface and uh, maybe um, have a uh, maybe have a, a circle cut out I mean this is not this is not design this is just to show you that it's possible uh, you'd have to have some really uh, good reason why this this is uh, to be the case, but you can obviously make cutouts very easily, right? So um, uh, I think that's all I wanted to show you, just that you could start to turn this into something that's not so uh, rectilinear just by um, just by adding some other features. So here I'd probably uh, have this actually maybe uh, maybe a way that I'd want to do this is to have this be a circle that actually is uh, concentric with this one. And um, so another tip to include that part uh, of the model, I could go to sketch, project, and uh, include that body in my, um, in my sketch. So here's the body. And if I hit OK and look at my sketch again uh, without the bodies turned on, you can see that this curve is now part of my uh, my sketch and now I can make a concentric circle or start to base uh, parts of my sketch off of the uh, the do design that's in the um, in the bodies or the components so I think those are the only things I wanted to show you uh, if you have any other tips you could just drop them in the comments thanks